Alrighty guys, good morning, happy Friday. So today we've got a Freightliner Cascadia DD15. Customer wants me to take a look at the compression, a little com quick compression test and to do a valve adjustment. So the first thing you wanna do, very, very simple. What kind of codes you got? We got check engine light, ABS light, uh, and that's about it. So truck is cold right now. Let's take a quick look. Let's plug in our computer. Let's launch the diagnostic link from Detroit and let's see what the codes are. So currently we are in neutral. Let's take a look and see what we got going here, baby. So let's see, connecting, connecting, connecting. Come on, diagnostic link. Let's see what we got. So before I do anything, this is probably the best thing to do is just kind of look and see what codes are there. This way you know exactly what you need to do or what you cannot do. All right, let's see here. It is connecting. You're gonna see everything over here on the left. Uh, let's see, the connected vehicle has devices that are incompatible, so it might need some software updates. Let me get that out of the way. Uh, we've got some CPC faults. Pretty common, depending on what was going on. Uh, here we go, all right. All righty guys, sorry about that, I hit the wrong button there. So we have uh, automatic gear selection, not available. That's an active fault code that will definitely trigger some issues there. ABS restricts gear functionality, yeah, I can see that but that's not why it's here. We have a central gateway fault code, radar fault code. God, I hate the radar stuff. So we do have a NOx outlet sensor drift. We have a DPF efficiency low. So that typically would be definitely a cost for the check engine light. So efficiency low means since these do have a soot sensor on there, okay, you guys are familiar with that. There's gonna have the extra sensor on the back uh, just above the NOx outlet sensor. It's gonna have this soot sensor. Uh, it probably means that the DPFs are, aren't doing their job correctly. And because of that, you may have to replace your DPFs, not clean and bake them, but actually replace them, exchange them from, uh, from the dealership. Uh, you can buy them, do them yourself, very, very easy to do. Uh, one thing I really wanna do really quick is just go to here, instrumentation, EGR, uh, DPF zone zero. Okay, that's a good sign. We're gonna go, actually, let me just go back here really quick. I'm gonna go to mechanical. And then what I like to look at is the oil pressure. Okay, I'm gonna just simply, do a compression test just to see what the numbers are. Relative compression test, I've done that before for you guys. Again, it's not an end all be all, but it gives you a pretty good idea of what the hell's going on. So let's see, run test, click on yes. Make sure nobody's there. Chavo, le voy a dar, okay? All right, guys, here goes. <laughs> just keep cranking, it'll stop on its own. And that's pretty much it. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, not bad. Compression is actually really good. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's see here. Print, print that out for the customer. Let's get that out of the way. So we do have some definitely some, we have good compression. 100, 98, 99, 98, 95, 96. I'm still going to do the valve adjustment because I still want to see where the valves are. If they're tight, if they're not tight, just kind of go from there. So I'm gonna get all the stuff out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and set this thing to TDC one or TDC six, it doesn't matter. And we're gonna go ahead and double check everything uh, and go from there. Man, this thing has a lot of stuff on here. So again, uh, on the CPC side, that could be a bad CPC. Uh, it could be a couple of different things, but anyway, let's get Alrighty, y'all. <laughs> so we have our DD15 all nice and ready to go. We are at TDC one, TDC six. Let's find out the difference. First thing I like to do, right out of the gate is I look for the timing marks on the back of the gear. I don't see any timing marks. I don't see any marks on the tooth. I don't see anything on the on the actual uh, plate or cover, which is gonna be that little bad boy that goes right there. Okay, if you don't see anything there, at around the 12 o'clock position, more than likely you're gonna be at TDC six. You can confirm that a couple different ways, okay? Look at the number one. Look at the lobe on number one, okay? I don't know if you can see that down there. I'm gonna try to zoom in and not be as shaky, but See the lobe down here where my finger's at? The lobe's already starting to push up on the number one. So it's starting to push up the ass end up down into the valves. That's gonna tell me more than likely that yes, I am on TDC six, which means we're gonna be adjusting valves three, five, and six on the inlet. I'm gonna mark them right now in a second. And we're gonna be mark, we're gonna be doing outlet only two. Okay, remember, look, take a look. This is Jake. And these are your valves. So you're gonna be doing two, four, 
and six. So because of that, that's what you're gonna be adjusting. Again, TDC six, second rotation, whatever you wanna call it, three, five, six, two, four, six. You're not gonna do the engine brake. Engine brake's gonna be completely different as far as the process goes, the way I do it, how you do it, that's up to you. So let me get some markers. Let me, let me get everything going here. You're gonna need a number 17 wrench. Mentioned that before, this is gonna be your inlet. Okay, you're gonna see that there, it's pretty worn out. It's 0 0.406 or 0 0.016, depending on however you wanna use that measurement. Here is our, our exhaust or outlet, 0 0.610 millimeter. Uh, oh yeah, I'm sorry, 0 0.610 mil millimeter or 0 0.024. So take, again, you're gonna need that. This is gonna be your 4.6. You're gonna see that there on the side. Hold on, buddy, let me, there we go, 4.6. That's the one you're gonna need. Now they do offer a 4.1, but that's on the earlier DD15 models. Make sure you know the difference. If you're not sure, look over here on the exhaust side, you're gonna see the lash 4.6 millimeter Jacobs. Okay, they're gonna be on there. Some of the earlier models, models don't have that, so you gotta know the difference. Uh, there's a certain way to tell, and it's really based on the engine serial number. So let me get everything else we're gonna need together. We're gonna need our T6, which is gonna be for these little bad boys here. Uh, I like to use a 17, something like that, simple. That way, when I break these loose, I use this, and then I use the actual wrench to make my adjustments along with the T there. So let's identify everything really quick, check our measurements, make our measurements and our adjustments, and then we'll go from there and then go into the engine brake side of things. So let's go. Alrighty, so I went ahead and haven't adjusted anything yet. I haven't checked anything in, but I just simply did this to identify it. Uh, you can use whatever you like. I use yellow paint, white paint, uh, just to kind of show you guys the difference. So again, we're gonna be adjusting on the second rotation, three, five, and six. I went ahead and did that with the white paint. Uh, once you rotate the engine 306 degrees, once you're done with those adjustments, you're gonna go ahead and adjust one, two, four on the intake and on the exhaust, one, three, and five. Okay, after that, you can go ahead and check the engine brakes. Again, that's a separate process in my opinion. I'd like to do that separate. I don't like to do that together. Um, so first thing first, Let's check number three, because it's the closest one to me. And let's take a look here. This is for our intake. So just kind of double check that there. And I think the customer said they had some work to, done to this before. Uh, let's take a look. And this had actually had good compression. So I was a little, sh I'm a little shocked. Look at that. I can't even get the feeler gauge in. So yes, you can have good compression. Okay, as far as percentage goes, but look at that. Look at the difference. Still can't get the filler gauge in. I'm gonna check the other one. Let's see if I can, there we go. Let's see if I can do that one-handed. And same thing. So yeah, you can still have good compression, good numbers, but you can still make need to make adjustments. Al. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. We're gonna do, like I said, three, five, six on the intake, and then we're gonna do two, four, six on the exhaust side. So let's go ahead and get that done. Rotate the engine 360 degrees. We're gonna do. We're gonna check the same thing on the yellows, and then we're pretty much all done from there. I am gonna check the engine brakes just for the sake of it, because the customer did have some work done. As you can tell, the cam housing's new. Whoever did the work actually did pretty good. Good work. I like seeing that. I like to see nice, clean work. Um, so, anyway, let's get this all done. All right, all set. So we went ahead and made the adjustments on TDC six, which again you're gonna know is as I mentioned before, three, five, six on the intake, two, four, six on the exhaust. They were actually tight where the filler gauge was barely able to get inside. Right now, Tony's gonna to go ahead and rotate the engine 360 degrees down to the bottom. And then we'll be ready to go with TDC one. Um, again, you're gonna make your adjustments, as I mentioned, one, two, four, one, three, five. Pretty simple, right? And if you wanna confirm, once you see the, on the back of the tooth, there's a little bit of a triangle. Sometimes you're gonna have a notch on this wheel. And then of course you're gonna have the lobe down here pushing up, pushing the ass end up in or down. Then you know you're gonna be making the adjustments on the other side, okay? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, and that's pretty much that. So once Tony's done rotating that 360 degrees, we'll go from there. Alrighty, TDC one, here we are. Let's check and let's, let's, uh, let's confirm Again, do we need to make a valve adjustment if our compression is good? So let's take a look, TDC1, you're gonna see right back there on that gear, there it is, right there, it's kind of hiding, okay? Sometimes there's a little notch. Either way, you're almost always gonna have the mark on the gear itself, okay? And that's the only triangle you're gonna find on the entire gear itself. So if you see it, TDC1. 
on the, that's a little bit harder to see because there is limited light right there on that tooth. That's where the mark is. So again, you're going to be TDC one, look at the lobe. If the lobe is pushing the acid of number six, then you're going to be on the other opposite end. Huh? Let's see here. Nope. Wrong gauge. All righty guys, really quick, just to verify, here is my intake filler gauge. Take a look there for yourself. Let's see if I can get this bad boy rocking and rolling. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get a better angle there. Sorry guys, again, GoPro. Hopefully I'll get one this weekend. Uh, oh, there we go, finally. A uh, little tight. Let's see, that's on that one. Let's see if I can, let's check number two just for shits and giggles, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, fucker, hold on. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna make the adjustments anyway, but again, that one was pretty snug. I was still able, sorry, this one was snug. I was still able to get it in there. Um, the other ones, number three, number five, I was barely even able to get just, just the tip. <laughs> um, but again, there you go. So I'm gonna make my adjustments anyway, screw it. Um, and we'll go from there. I'm gonna retest and see if the numbers change. Hopefully they get better, they should, or they at the very least should stay the same. So let's go. Alrighty guys, valve adjustment, all done. That's good. Uh, I haven't tested yet, but I wanted to show you guys. So when you have a DPF efficiency fault code, one of the things I like to look at first is the tailpipe on the exhaust. Now, some of the older trucks are gonna have the pipe going north and south, and then a few of them are gonna be actually down here near the drive line. So what I like to do is look at the tailpipe. Okay, now you're gonna wanna look underneath here on this side. You can see my hands are clean. Check this out. So that tells me those DPFs are no longer doing their job, which is number one, why your NOx efficiency is down because it's getting this ash and soot is getting into the SCR. And because it's getting into the SCR, it's gonna knock your NOx efficiency down. So at this point, you have really just two choices. You can replace the DPFs. That's what I suggest, okay? I've, I've just been seeing that more and more when you have that NOx efficiency going down. And if you have tailpipe um, ash in the tailpipe, which you should not have any, that means, again, the DPFs are no longer doing their job and they're compromised or one box is damaged and that's compromised. So you're gonna have to really take apart the one box and get a better idea of what's going on. So if you have a DPF efficiency fault code, you're gonna have to start putting your hands on it and get the one box out and look for soot. So if you have soot, chances are those DPFs are compromised and they gotta come out. Uh, worst case scenario, the one box is no good and then you already know what that means. So right now, Tony's almost done there. Uh, we're already plugged in and ready to go. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna start the truck up first, let it run for, I don't know, a minute or so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a, turn it off. And then I'm gonna do a compression test after that, just to kind of see where the numbers are, see what's going on. Uh, the truck itself, let's see, what do we have? Active, active, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I got no lights on, but earlier when we turned on the phone or the camera recording, we were showing a check engine light. So that CPC might be bad or we might have something else going on. Uh, but unfortunately that's not why it's here. So here we go, here we are. Let me turn it over a little bit so we get a little bit less of a glare. <sighs> All right guys, so look at that. All those codes are gone. So maybe something's going on with that CPC, which is possible because it is that CPC4 design. Uh, next, uh, Knox outlet sensor drift, okay. Again, if, you're, if, if your DPFs are not doing their job, that would definitely affect the outlet sensor. And I believe the customer said they already replaced their NOx outlet sensor. So don't waste your money. You gotta start looking around first. Uh, it could be the NOx sensor is bad, but again, since it was just replaced and you have a DPF efficiency code and I show you guys the soot that's getting through, I would start there first before you're starting replacing a sensor again. So uh, let's fire up the truck. Uh, again, first thing I like to look at, instrumentation. I like to go over to the mechanical tab. You're gonna click on that and then start it up. And the first thing I wanna look at is oil pressure. I wanna verify I have good oil pressure. So let me do that first. Chavo, se puede All right, we're gonna fire it up, guys. I just wanna see what the oil pressure looks like. Pretty good, pretty consistent. About 60 PSI, I'm just gonna round it up, not a big deal. The truck itself sounds really good. I do like the way it sounds. There we go, those are our numbers. So there are some changes. Uh, look at that, 89, I think that number was actually higher. So we got a little bit lower on the compression side. Um, I can run the test again. I think what I wanna do is just kinda do a little road test and see what's going on. So 
not terrible. Again, I think this was at 90 something or 100. I'm gonna have to look at that or record the video or go back at the video and take a look. So anyway, uh, once per cycle. So let's just go ahead and shut that down for a second. And let's do it again. Be back. Alrighty guys, key is off. I'm gonna just do this one more time just for shits and giggles. Let's see what this compression is gonna look like on this truck. Um, I was kind of hoping to have better numbers just all the way around, but in some places I had a bit of a decline. Um, I don't know, let's find out. So here we go. Let me just wait till it's all connected right now. Let's see what codes that we have. Uh, yeah, CPC, those codes are gone. Again, that CPC itself could be bad. Um, I don't wanna go that route yet. Let's see, let's take a look. All right, here we go. So same as usual, actions, relative compression test. Wait till it's ready, it's on board, and then we're gonna click on run test. Click on yes, crank it, and then go from there. Alrighty guys, let's see what the computer's gonna spit out. Look at that. So we do have some numbers that are changing. Um, look at that, that was interesting because that was much higher, this was lower all over the place so what i'm going to do is kind of do a road test maybe the computer's still doing a learning process just because again it is things change right i've changed the way the valves were adjusted some were definitely tight others were okay um let's do a road test let's come back and test but anyway so there you have it guys if you do a valve adjustment uh it's more of a maintenance thing you can still have good numbers and your valves be tight in this case i just did the valve adjustment and then look at the numbers so they kind of fluctuate so let's just do a road test and go from there guys so if the video helps you guys out, I know it's not all sunshines and whatnot, but there it is, guys. If you like the video, if it helps you guys out, as always, like and subscribe. Have a good one. All righty, guys. So we went ahead and just finished up a quick little regen just to kind of test things out and see how they're going. Unfortunately, that DPF efficiency is going to play a factor, in my opinion, as to why the NOx efficiency was pretty low. NOx efficiency started off good at about 90-something, 90 92%, and then it started declining to like 68%. 66%. So if those DPF filters are not functioning properly, that will cause a problem with your NOx efficiency. Now I just talked to the driver and he said they were they were replaced less than a year ago. So he's going to take them back to his mechanic and they're going to figure out what the hell's going on. Uh, I don't know if they were new from the dealer exchange. I have no idea guys. So um, that being said, I'm going to turn off the key really quick. Now the truck itself is plenty hot. It's, uh, I think it's about 100 almost 200 degrees once i cycle the key which i just did right now i'm gonna go ahead and do a compression test again let's just see for shits and giggles man because i'm kind of uh bothered with the fact that this thing is kind of giving me different uh mixed signals here so anyway let's get this curtain out of the way for a second well too late it ain't gonna go anywhere all right computer's not responding wonderful let's just wait and see once it comes back online guys i'm gonna go ahead and do another um compression test and let's just see what the numbers are now that the engine's nice and hot let's see what's Alrighty, going on guys we are back again here we go actions relative comp oh, wrong one damn it i'm not trying to change the time on this thing so actions relative compression test we're going to do the same thing again we're going to run the test hold on there we go run test click on yes make sure nobody's sticking their nose in there watch out on that here goes guys all righty let's see what the numbers are does it make a difference that it's nice and hot uh look at that i think we have some improvements i do like these improvements quite a bit so now that the engine's warm the engine is hot the engine the engine has done uh, full regen i'm not happy with the regen but unfortunately i cannot control that I'm gonna print that out for the customer and there you go guys there are the results so the numbers are in the 90s pretty good i'm gonna compare them really quick to the old stuff and go from there guys so there you have it yes you can have good compression and yes you can still have to do a valve adjustment again depending on how tight the valves are so guys if you like the video and it helps you guys out again i like to keep it simple i don't ask for too much just if you like the video give it a like give it a thumbs up have yourself a great weekend